Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Plane's Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. This is one method that works. Today, we're going to talk about ignition systems. Not all ignition systems. A lot of you are going to have electronic ignition systems on your engines, which are very, very similar to what you have on automotive applications today. Many of you are more familiar with those than you're going to be with what we want to talk about here, which is magneto ignition systems. Magneto ignition systems go way back before the invention of the Wright Brothers' first airplane. Magnetos are great because if the engine is turning, you have spark. So there's three components we just want to briefly touch on before we go to actually talk about how we, how we adjust them on your engine. First would be the magneto, and the, the two magnetos you're going to see a lot will be the the, a slick magneto or a Bendix. And we'll have a Bendix on the engine we're going to be working on. This is a slick. Um, and the things to think about or to, to see are that you're going to have the, the drive end, which is going to have a gear which interfaces with the back of your engine. This one has an impulse coupler, which boosts the spark for starting. And then you're going to have the, the places where the spark plug wires connect on the back. And then you're also going to have the, what we call the P-lead. So a magneto is an interesting device. This will provide a spark just by turning the engine over. You need to make sure that you turn that spark off if you want the engine to stop running. And so we do that by grounding what's called the P-lead here. So that's this connection. One caution, um, an old time mechanic once handed me a mag put it down in my hand like this and said, now just give that thing a turn. I got a wallop of a, sho of a shock. So be careful, don't just hold it on. That's a great joke for, for somebody just getting started. So there's your magneto, it's gonna be about that size. Then you're gonna have a harness, the, 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 magne or the, uh, the, the spark plug harness. Generally we'll have a built-in um, uh, wires which go into the cap. The cap fits right on the back of the magneto and screws on with a couple of screws. And then the other end are gonna have ends that, that interface with the aviation spark plugs, which are gonna look different than what you have on your typical car. So these actually will screw on to make sure that they don't come off. Um, when you're taking a look at your harness, you wanna make sure that you don't have any breaks in the insulation, you don't have any, any fraying or harness or, uh, or uh, stray strands of, um, of shielding sticking out. And you wanna take a look at what these are referred to as the cigarettes, the insulators. Make sure that they're in good shape, that they're not dirty, that the spring is intact at the bottom. Finally, the last segment we're gonna have in our ignition system is a spark plug. This is an aviation massive electrode spark plug. You'll see that it'll have uh, two side electrodes and a center electrode and a brand new one like this. The center electrode is going to be round. And you're gonna have a little spark plug, plug gap and we'll talk later in another segment about how to adjust that. You'll have a copper washer, which is important. If you don't have that, you're not gonna get a good seal onto your, uh, your cylinder. And then the back end of the spark plug is gonna interface with this ignition harness where this will actually screw into place and, uh, and make sure it's well captured. So the one thing you wanna be very careful about aviation plugs, they're different than automotive plugs, there's an old saying in aviation, if you drop it once, drop it twice. The second time, into the trash can. There's an insulator in here which can crack if you drop this on a concrete floor and you can't see it. So you have to assume that if you've dropped one of these expensive spark plugs, that it is ruined. So always treat them with care, keep them over a workbench and put them in a holder so you've got some place to keep them organized. Those are the basics of the, uh, the, the, the pieces of the ignition system. Now let's go on over here to the airplane and we'll talk about how we time that to the engine. Now before we get started with uh, actually checking the timing on this engine, we wanna make sure that we're doing this as safely as possible. So the first thing we did was we disconnected all eight spark plug wires. That guarantees that no matter what, it can't fire. We then pulled the bottom four spark plugs, one out of each cylinder, which releases the compression so that not only can't it fire, but it'll make it easier to turn the prop when we're checking the timing. So those are safety things you wanna make sure you accomplish first. Now, in order to check your timing, you're gonna need a magneto synchronizer, more commonly referred to as a buzz box, and they come in different styles. This is a pretty nice one. And it's gonna have three wires coming out of it. One is gonna to go to each P lead and one is gonna to go to ground. So we've already connected the green wire to the right mag's P lead. We're gonna go ahead and connect this up so that we'll find a good ground for the black wire. And then we'll connect the P lead 
the red one, to the left mag. Um, now we're all hooked up and we can go ahead and check timing. But what does timing really mean? It means that we want the magneto to fire the spark plug when the crank is at a particular position. You want to take a look at your engine's documentation and determine where it should fire. Mostly, most of the light combings are either going to be at 20 degrees before top dead center or 25 degrees before top dead center. So we're going to see here on our starter ring gear marks for the various timing. And the first thing you want to find is the top dead center for number one. And we can line that up with the little hole here in the starter. Um, there's also a set of marks on the back which line up with the crank split line. You can use whichever ones work best for you. Most people with, uh, with uh, a lot of the, the baffles which come in front of this spot will use the one in front of the starter. So we can go ahead and find top dead center by lining that mark up with the little hole and we know that that's top dead center. Now, what we really want to time the mag to on this engine is 20 degrees before top dead center, so we're going to come back, and here's the 20 degree mark. Now, we actually want to go a little past it and then come up on it so that you're always moving forward, and that way it takes out the gear lash. So now I've got that lined up at 20 degrees before top dead center. I'm going to turn on the buzz box, and you'll hear it doing a little screaming at us. You might turn on your buzz box and discover you get no noise and no lights. What that probably means is you forgot to turn the ignition switch to both. You have got to turn that switch to both and that's safe to do now that we've disconnected all of the spark plug wires. So it's screaming at us because we're right on time and I'm going to move the prop just a little bit and I get the, light, the lights and the sound to go out. I'm going to come back up on that spot and I'm going to see when there's the left mag, there's the right mag, and I barely moved it, much less than a degree. So that's really, really acceptable. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to check again to make sure that we're right on that 20 degree mark, and we are. So this engine is timed properly. Okay, this engine's timed perfectly, but what if it wasn't? Well, then we'd have to adjust the timing. We do that very, very simply by moving the magneto. We just twist it a little bit. Now the magneto is held on by two bolts, actually two studs with two nuts. Well, you have to go in here and you have to loosen those up depending upon how much firewall room you've got between the back of the engine and the, uh, and the firewall. It can be easier, it can be hard. So in this case there'll be one nut on top and one nut way down here buried amongst all these hoses. And you know what? Why don't we go to our spare engine and we'll show it to you over there. Okay, so now that we've got our spare engine, you can actually see things a little better. The way a magneto is attached is with these little clamps and a single uh, nut that holds it onto that stud. There's one on either side, one down near the bottom, and one up here near the top. So all we have to do is loosen those up a little bit, just a little bit. We don't want to have them, we don't want to take it off because we actually want the magneto to have a little resistance. And then I'm going to move this a whole lot. You can see the range of motion we would have on the magneto to adjust the timing. That's way more than you're ever going to need to use. So once you have those loosened up and you have your buzz box going, you're going to make this move just a little bit until you can get those lights to go out. And that tells you that you're, that you're synchronized, that you're, you're lined up. This is assuming that you've mark, set your timing mark uh, on the proper spot in the proper part in the crankshaft rotation. So now we'd move this a little bit. Once you get it all lined up, then you're going to want to very gently tighten these bolts up, these nuts up, because as you tighten them, they have a tendency to move the magneto a little bit. And so just alternate between the two and listen to your buzz box so that if it, if it changes tone while you're doing it, you know you've moved things. When everything is nice and snug back up, Torque back up, check the timing again by moving the prop, and you'll find that you, you've set your timing exactly where you want it. That's all there is to setting ignition timing with a magneto. It's very, very simple. But before we leave the job, we need to remember two safety things. First, don't forget to turn off that ignition switch. We've left it on here. We're going to go back and turn it back off. Then you have to put all your spark plugs back in. Make sure you use anti-seize. Torque them properly. Reconnect all of your spark plug wires, and then it's probably a good idea to go out and test run the engine just to make sure that everything is fine.
So thanks for watching. Thanks to Tempest for sponsoring the series. And we'll see you next time on Kit Plane's Firewall Forward. That's a place to stop. That's all there is for today. I don't like that. That's all there is to setting your, your ignition.